Dimensions. In this tutorial, we'll look at a couple of standard ways on how to add dimensions to your orthographic view. So let's start with the, the easiest of the dimensions. When we have a specific component and we need to know what the dimensions are, we first draw extension lines. And our extension lines are just slightly away from the component, so a small gap between the component and the extension line. And then in between these two extension lines, we have dimension lines. So there's two lines that you have to remember here, which is also discussed in the tutorial on line alphabet. The first being the extension line, and the second being dimension line. Now remember the rule is that extension lines can cross over a component or over other extension lines, but the dimension line never crosses anything. On top of the dimension line here, you can write the actual dimension. There's a small uh, schematic in your lecture slides that shows you where to write that number. So please make sure if you're not sure when to write it where, that you go through the lecture slides to make sure that you do. So these you can continue and easily add on any of the sides, just having extension lines and ha adding a dimension line in between there. You can also have an extension line and between a center line or slightly extending a center line and an extension line, you can add a dimension like that. When we look at dimensioning a diameter, we want to have a dimension line running across the center line from one edge to the other. Then we extend that line out and it has a horizontal leg where we write diameter symbol and the size of that diameter. If we do not have a full circle, but it's only a half a circle, we again start from the 45 degree, from a 45 degree from that initial cross section, and we have a point out to the radius. So this is just a half a circle, so we're just indicating radius. We're extending this line, another horizontal foot piece, and we can write R for radius and 40 to indicate that distance. Now there's a couple of things to remember when we are doing circles. Say for example you have two circles that are both going all the way around. When I'm doing these dimension lines, you always want these dimension lines to be 90 degrees with each other. So if this for example was 30, I'll make a second one to indicate the larger diameter. No more than two of these dimensions on a circle. If there were another circle or another half circle, you will use one of the other views to, to write in that dimension. But no more than two dimensions on the front face of a circle when you have it like this. Another specific case that we do with circles, so if we, for example, have a slot section. So this is a very specific case. So remember, in general, when we have a full circle, or anything bigger than a half circle, anything between a half circle and a full circle, we use the diameter. If we have a half circle and smaller, we use the radius. So in this case, we actually have a half circle, but this is a slot. Now, the slot will be manufactured by using a milling point, putting it into one side, and then dragging it across to the other center point before taking it out. So to help manufacturing, because that's the point of these drawings, remember, you're making these drawings in the detail that you are because you want to hand this over to someone that can manufacture this part for you. In that case, what we want to do is, if we have our center lines here, we want to slightly extend it on the one side so we can have our dimension line running through like that. So we don't use the radius for a slot um, in a component, but we just slightly extend this line up and we draw it out and write it as a diameter form. This way when the workshop gets this drawing, it sees diameter 10 and it can immediately use the, the milling point that's diameter 10 to mold this shape. There's another dimension line that we can use. If we have a very small component here, 
and we want to do extension lines, this is almost not enough space to draw in our arrows and everything. So what we do is we just draw a line in between there. We have the arrow lines on either side and you can either now write this dimension over here or if you don't want to write it there, you can extend one of these sides and write it over there. So those are the two options that you have if you need to dimension a very small component. We generally try and stay away from dimensioning on a component, but there are some cases where we can't get away from that. But as we continue with this example, we'll see how dimensions will look.